This tutorial will continue with the last tutorial that was looking at how to break up a wall section and now we will start adding detail components. When we are in the annotate tab, similar to when we added the break line, we're going to go to the detail component and we're going to see what different options we have in Revit. We added that break line, we have a few bricks and we have a W section. So what I want to do is I want to add components that I need for this particular project. I have brick and I have brick on the exterior wall so that could work well but bricks are actually something that can be a repeating detail component not all components are repeating detail components but brick is so I want to use the pull down and I want to go to a repeating detail component and then you notice that it autom automatically defaults to the brick there are no other repeating detail components loaded in but luckily the brick is what I need as I mentioned in an earlier tutorial, brick actually needs to be supported because of its dead weight on the foundation even if it's not part of a load bearing wall. So I'm actually going to start my brick here and I can use the spacebar to orient the brick according to where it is on the wall. I'm going to come up past that brake line and technically because of coursing for our brick courses, I would want to do it up the entire wall. But because I've broken up the wall section, I don't necessarily need to do that now because I'm not going to look at brick coursing as part of this assignment. Brick coursing is an important thing because you want to look at both the brick sizes and the size of the um, mortar between the bricks and make sure that they align with where you're putting windows and doors similar to what we talked about in the class on the exterior finished materials for light wood frame construction. You notice that when I put those brick components in it hid behind the brake line here but it didn't do that here. Sometimes you have to click on a component and then you have to in the modify tool bring to front or send to back. So we want that break line to be in front of those bricks because it's breaking the detail. So I want to click bring to front and then you notice it hides that brick. So sometimes this depends on how you place things when you place things as to whether it hides something or not. So it's always something to make sure to look for so your drawings are not incorrect and in how they're representing information. Sometimes we need to bring in components that are not already in the drawing. So I can either go to the detail component, click on it, and then go to insert. And I'm not giving, getting that option. So I can hit escape twice to get out of that command and go back to regular detail component and load family pops up. So we're back in the components we looked at before and remember for detail components we need to go to the detail items folder and we need to pick things based on what we need. So I could go to masonry and within masonry I'm going to have different types of masonry. Clay unit masonry would be brick, concrete unit masonry would be concrete block. When I look for these options look at the pictures. So this is what that brick would look like. It even has the mortar joint with the mortar, not just the brick itself. Something from the side and something from the top. The top is what we would use for a floor plan detail. So I can go ahead and open that even though I wouldn't use that in this particular drawing. So if I hit escape and I actually go to my floor plan detail, I can zoom in and go back to the detail component and notice the brick that I just loaded in is here and I can start using that brick. Corners are really interesting because you have to think about how do you turn a corner with something like masonry. And so this will be part of your research. Also sometimes these components can be a little finicky and don't snap where we want them to. So we place them and then we have to move them around. And the snap and rev it's not always great either so sometimes you have to be patient with that. So I can add the component again or I can copy it. And again we want it to go past our brake line. If the brake line's not hiding it we might need to bring that brake line to the front. And now we're starting to get planned components as opposed to just the hatch that we saw earlier. Other things you can bring in are wood studs metal studs, concrete blocks again, and then when you need to add insulation, there's actually an insulation tool that you would then draw 
in between the studs. So you would typically want to place those wood or metal studs first. Other ways to show things like rigid insulation would be a region that has the hatch based on what the hatch would be for rigid insulation. So make sure to go back to that um, hatch guide that's at the back of Building Construction Illustrated to make sure you get the proper hatch for things that you will not get detail components for. This is how you add detail components in both plan and section, so play around with those since you have to do a wall section and a floor plan detail for this assignment.